introduction to all. Today is uh, really one of the auspicious events because uh, since uh, many days the holy land of Puducherry was vibrating because 21st February the mother's birthday, 28th that was the foundation day of Auroville and yesterday the supramental manifestation day so many people around the world they visited it is really an auspicious occasion for all of us and as part of Shurabindu's, this commemorating Shurabindu's 158th birth anniversary which is going to be completed by 15th August 2024 and also the 10th edition of the Pondicherry Heritage Festival so we have scheduled this today's program that is Pondicherry, the Cave of the Pasha before we start our proceedings we will just meditate for one minute our offering to the mother I will request my colleague to kindly play the music, then we will start it. As I mentioned that uh, it was a, one of the auspicious moments when we talk about consciousness uh, the mother mentions that the world is preparing for a big change will you help? so that change is particularly the change of consciousness and with that a mother established the society in 1960 and the mother is the permanent president of the society and under her dynamic blessings and the guidance, the society has more than 300 branches all over India and certain countries. And the society has been striving its activities on many uh, dimensions, including the health, culture, education, and other areas. And when we talk about the culture, it has its special importance because Maharshi Aurobindo has given special emphasis to address the critical issues related to culture to the defense of Indian culture and we have also started here many important projects in terms of intangible cultural heritage, the cross-cultural studies and also to address the diversity of cultural expressions and we may say that every day, every moment is a festive celebration for us because when we interact with the people, when we interact with the communities and also to address all the significant topics we feel very blessed to do all such events and uh, it is really a matter of a great pleasure for all of us that recently Shurabindu Society and Pondicherry University in the Demo of Science and we are very much thankful to the esteemed Vice Chancellor Sri Professor Dr. Suji for joining us as the, today is a special guest for this event sir and we have also eminent speakers with us uh, Sri Lalit Parmaji, the President of Aurodhan Art Gallery, Sri Shiv Shankar Babuji from Tamil Heritage Trust, Sri S.P. Goswamiji, the advisor to the Chancellor from KM University Mathura, Sri Arpitji, a lifelong devotee of Mother and Sri Aurobindo, also from Mathura, and one Professor uh, Chela Karumalji, he is going to join with us. And I also welcome all of you for this today's beautiful evening. We will address some of the Critical and some of the very significant topics. Pondicherry, the cave of Tapusha. Uh, before we start, I would like to felicitate our guest. <laughs> Actually, this year we are celebrating the 10th edition of the Pondicherry Heritage Festival. And uh, last year, when we joined with the 9th edition, we discussed about some of the important areas, particularly cultural heritage conservation, the intangible cultural heritage and the knowledge practices. And this year we focus on a specific event that is the Pondicherry, the cave of the Pasha. I 
Actually, this is one of the important areas. When Maharshi Aurobindo came to this land, he mentioned, I quote, Onichiri is my place of retreat, my cave of the Bhasha, not of the ascetic kind, but a brand of my own inventions, I unquote. Particularly, if you refer, Sri Aurobindo didn't come to this place to open an ashram. It was not his objective actually. He was trying to find a place where he can practice his sadhana, integral yoga, and a big future was awaiting. Even in the Nalinkant, uh, Nalinbai's, Nalinda's words also is mentioned. According to tradition, Rishi Agastya came to the south to spread the Vedic lore and teach the iron discipline. And it was Pondicherry that he founded a famous seat of Vedic learning. The great sage was known as the guardian spirit of the city. The parallelism here is striking. So when we talk about Pondicherry, it has its uniqueness in terms of the natural heritage, in terms of the tangible and intangible cultural heritage. Here you will find a lot of tradition of the Siddhas, many temples, and also the knowledge system referring to the Tamil Saiba manuscripts. And uh, through our regular activities, through research problem projects and programs, we try to do little with the guidance and blessings of the mother. And this is one of the unique topics which needs to be addressed, especially when you talk about the spiritual and the energies of this land. Mm. So, uh, we are very much uh, thankful to the SJ Device Center of Bonchir University, Professor K. Thayani University, and also the Director of Department of Tourism, Sri V. Kalia Perumalchi, for it's a joint collaborative event actually, as part of our MOU. And uh, we are very much thankful to all of your presence here. Uh, I would like to request our esteemed vice chancellor to kindly say his views on this occasion, then we will start. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Kishore Kumar Tripadi and the respected uh, Sri Lalit Kumar Verma, President of Arodhan Art Gallery, uh, Dr. S. P. Goswami, former district education officer and uh, Professor Yes Sela Parma who is going to join. He's, he knows me, I know him also. He has, he was a uh, former professor of anthropology. And uh, Sri Sivashankar Babu, Dr. Sailen Krishna Swami, and all the uh, delegates who are uh, attending this uh, function. So Pondicherry is a uh, very important city at present uh, the culture in Pondicherry, majority of the culture in Pondicherry is not respecting the actually what, is, what was the earlier culture. But you are all uh, blessed because of the presence of uh, Sri Aravindu and also Mother. But still that culture still there is following here. Yes, earlier you must be knowing our uh, name of Pondicherry was, uh, the earlier name is not the Pondicherry. So, it is traditionally, uh, it, is, it was like a, a Kasi, Varnasi, where all the South Indian Rishis, South Indian Siddhas, and uh, they used to come here and then discuss, they cannot avoid uh, Pondicherry. It, it was uh, not Pondicherry earlier, it was Vedaburi. That was the original name. You must be knowing, you are all experts. Uh, it was uh, when it was Vedaburi, they used to come here and uh, discuss. And you must be knowing uh, by this time also the, the spiritual path is not uh, like a uh, one way route or even not even the two-way route. There are uh, uh, different paths and uh, it is like an infinite uh, path you can say. Uh -huh. Whatever the way uh, you can try, so there is a, a pressure for understanding and uh, also the human mind Whatever uh, we have regularly doing for the day-to-day -day activities, very short. 
but uh, beyond the human mind if you go beyond our consciousness that uh, if you take that path that length our uh, human whatever the uh, mind we require uh, to lead the life is very short so in that way you can see uh, there are different levels of consciousness i think uh, arvind also would have mentioned this there are different levels of consciousness and uh, in this consciousness different levels of consciousness people definitely would have come to vedapuri and uh, as per their needs they would have uh, done tapas here that may be the reason uh, uh, to bring uh, uh, people like uh, uh, monk like i can say uh, sri arvind do sri madha and then uh, even uh, to some extent i can say even uh, subramanya bharatiya he was radical poet as well as the uh, he was very much interested in uh, doing tapas also here but since his uh, stay was very short as uh, his life is also start short but uh, because of this his real understanding of uh, his knowledge on the spiritual was not uh, really uh, written but still he has written somewhere is understanding and uh, because of this the pondicherry is definitely playing a major role and uh, you must be uh, also understanding this pondicherry importance of pondicherry even over visits our university they say sir we are getting uh, different vibrations we feel rejuvenated you will also agree with me so people come from delhi mumbai where the chennai even chennai even bangalore they feel you no know, rejuvenated they want to stay here throughout their life but still that job is the duty is not here that may be the reason they go back but otherwise uh, our city is really blessed with uh, so many uh, divine souls i feel always they stay here they bless us even though their lifetime is uh, over but the soul time that we uh, is there and then they are blessing us that you can see only whenever uh, we understand the spirituality and all those things so in this way pondicherry has a uh, 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 very uh, there are many Uh, Siddha Purusha still you can see. I think last time uh, Kishor Kumar ji has arranged a very nice uh, program on uh, dwelling into different uh, parts of Siddhas. So I missed the early part, but I understand. I since I was here more than thirteen years, I know they are all uh, you know. Uh, um, they are not visible; they are all invisible souls. We are all blessing them, and uh, since their uh, work is not uh, exist, whereas our uh, mother's work and then uh, Arvind's work is visibly seen, we are all following it. That may be the reason we are able to understand. Whereas those invisible souls, uh, we are not able to understand, but still the vibration exists, and they are all blessing us. And when it <coughs> when it comes to the spirituality, as I told you, there are uh, uh, different levels, and uh, the uh, ashram is Arvind Society is. Uh, doing a uh, lot of wonderful things bringing about the books about understanding but whatever the uh, our arvind do said the world is getting ready for the different dimensions that you can see from 
uh, recent uh, transformations, recent world order, and uh, going into the uh, different dimensions also. So even the India now earlier, uh, we were worrying about only food, how to earn our living living things. But now after the after the economic uh, liberalization, many of them, except 20 percent or 25 percent, they are below poverty line. Those who are above poverty line, <coughs> once they satisfied with the whatever the whatever their need, but ultimate the next goal is uh, what are we, where are we, what is uh, what for I am here. So I could see many of the students who are uh, uh, educated, even though they are earning well, earning well, they are looking for the spirituality. India is known for this. So, uh, in this way also we can uh, understand. So, there is a really the spiritual transformation is going on. And uh, uh, you could see Pondicherry also, there are many people who are visiting uh, Pondicherry for this reason. And uh, uh, they are getting attracted to this. Our EDC also uh, very fortunate who visit uh, the Aravindu Ashram or Aravil and they, since if the, it is, uh, the background is, education background is matching with them, we are also getting benefited. Any alternative form of life existing here and uh, they visit us and uh, we have a lot of new views. Uh, other than the other will, because of this, the, we have also benefited. And uh, taking this uh, point, I also agree with this. Uh, definitely, Pondicherry is the uh, good place for uh, spiritual growth. And uh, uh, I thank our. Uh, um, Tripathiji for inviting me and uh, allowing me to give my opinion on this and uh, definitely if anything else to be discussed, I am part of it. Now this is my introduction. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful thing what said you mentioned and it is always a matter of a great pleasure to listen from different occasions. There is a, you mentioned about the invisible power in the visible universe. The Shastras also defined Yat Pinde Tat Brahmande. Someone has translated these beautiful words that I am a universe in the universe. So the main purpose of this spirituality, particularly what India and Bharat has given to the land that is the spirituality. And you also mentioned about that economic liberalization, which was a particularly and also the Sastra also defines the four things, the Ramatha, Dhamma and Moksha. The points are really beneficial and uh, as you mentioned about this <coughs> collaborative activities between Monash University and Sri Aurobindo Society. And recently we had a wonderful session with the delegates who came from the Bitcoin University in the Psychology Department. And also we look forward for joint collaborative projects and uh, programs and with the dynamic support and guidance when things will be organized. Thank you so much for your uh, encouraging words. And now may I request uh, Mr. Diganj to kindly play the message of <coughs> the Director of the Department of Art and Culture. Due to some urgent meeting, uh, he is currently at Arunachal Pradesh, but he has sent his short message because as a collaborator of this event.
So they have given a good blasphemy and preachers for the well being of the livelihood of our future people. Earlier, our city has conducted Siddhar conference during the International Siddhar Day in which more than 40 saints and the persons who are looking after the Siddha Vedas were participated and given their valuable speeches here. It was a very happy moment. So, here, Mahana Ravinda and Mahakavi Bharati, who were also Siddhas, lived in Puducherry. Mahana Ravinda has given good classical things for the human welfare of the <coughs> world. Likewise, Sri Mahakavi Bharati, who is, uh, is the national poet, who lived here in ten years and returned to many good books and then valuable contributions to this society. So, being the Department of Art and Culture always supports Sri Arvindo Society to conduct such a valuable seminars on any occasions. I once again thank the Arvindo Society for conducting this conference and I wish to this conference you will be connected to the SMS school Thank you. Uh, here, brothers and sisters, I welcome you all to this session. Give a blessing on behalf of our own. Actually, the director of the department of our campus was supposed to join, but due to some unavoidable visa process, he's not here. And uh, sir, I would like to inform you that <coughs> with the dynamic support and guidance from the, because the current chief minister is the member minister of culture, and we tried to establish a good relationship with the department. And recently, that showed in those international conference, the Siddha conference also, we had some four and five programs with the local government. And I say the enormous cooperation, particularly Sri V. Kalya Perumalji, he has two identity for me. I consider him as my elder brother. In an administrator, his role is different, but sometimes when we discuss about the heritage, it is something different. So, this is one of the unique things what he mentioned in a short speech, and a beautiful Lord Buddha statue was behind the glimpses of Arunachal Pradesh, we can see. <coughs> I'd like to say for two minutes something on this spirituality what Sir has mentioned. <clears throat> Particularly the term tapasya in Indian psychology and in Indian spirituality or the evolution of human consciousness has its unique place. We have seen the tradition what Maharshi Aurobindo refers to the famous Bhavani Bharati text. Like there are the sages in the Himalayas, with, with their penance with Taposha only this country, this our Aryabhat country was rising. And we have a strong and a vibrating, we can say, legacy of the spiritual ethos, starting from the Vedas to the modern times. We have the scriptures, the people are here, those who are fond of knowledge, whatever they found, whether the stones, the leaves, whatever they found, they just preserve the knowledge system to the future generations. And in the triple transformation process, when the man, nature and the universe, they are interconnected, but how to connect with that? The Sastra reveals the outer world, which is completely visible. We can ex explore many things, but the inner world is also quite so impressive. Many hidden treasures need to be developed. And that is only through our connection with the consciousness that is possible. 
And this consciousness, as I mentioned about Sri has written extensively on this integral psychology and the consciousness. Even in the evolution of human consciousness, Mahesh Sri has written, which Lalit Bhai is going to elaborate in a detailed way. And when we talk about Pondicherry, Sir mentioned about Vedapuri, sometimes uh, you will be astonished. If you refer to a famous Shiva temple here, that name is Bahur temple. There is an inscription, it says, in 961 AD, there was a Veda Guru Patashala and 1000 Veda Party students were studying that time. And that Bahur Shiva temple is such a vibrating place. If you go to the temple, have darshan and meditate for a few minutes, you will see a different kind of vibrations are there. And Pondicherry, we talk about Rishi Agastya came to this land and he has extensively, even in the Shurvinda Ashram Samadhi, it is believed that Rishi Agastya is Havankur, that Agyakundu was there. And uh, as I mentioned about the invisible powers, like in Chidambaram temple also, sir, we have read somewhere, all the Siddhas, they have their meetings with the Chidambaram temple, in somewhere we have read. And we have many technological advances to measure many things. And the Siddhas has also measured the weight of the soul. So these are the things, very invisible things they have found. And Pondicherry or Puducherry or Vedapodi, it's only the change of these social cultural settlements, but the knowledge never changes because it is integral. So when Maharshi Aurobindo came to this land, a specific thing was to establish here, he did that and that is following on. And with Sri Aurobindo Ashram, like the cave of the Pasha Sri Aurobindo has mentioned, Here you will find the Saiva manuscripts. Pondicherry has given one of the most significant traditions that is the Saiva manuscripts, which is included under the UNESCO's Memory of the World Register. We have some four to five hundred manuscripts at the French Institute of Pondicherry. And also the integral yoga and consciousness, which is one, which is one of the important gifts to the world. You see, this is the place I would just trying to these are the places when Sri Aurobindo came to this uh, Pondicherry, he stayed because we talk about the heritage and the monuments. The first is the Sankar Chetty house, then the Sundar Chetty house also, Raghav Chetty house. Even if it's in 1910, Sri Aurobindo stated one thing, I shall be obliged if you will allow me to inform everyone interested in my whereabouts through your journal that I am and will remain in Pondicherry because the British people was not uh, trying to allow him to stay here because they have their mind that he's trying to do something against the British even if some British and French settlements were there. So these are the seven places actually you were sure in the state in <coughs> Sankar Chetty house, then Sundar Chetty house, then the Raghav Chetty house, then Mission Street house. And also the one of the which is called the guest house, then Rio de la Marine house, and Rio Francis Martin. These are the seven places where Sri Aurobindo. Okay. So these are the places where Sri Aurobindo stayed in. One of the buildings belongs to Sri Aurobindo Ashram now. See, the ashram is one of the biggest communities. When we talk about the cave of the Pasha, I think I hope. This is one of the greatest caves where Shurabindu lived, their Samadhi and Samadhi of the Mother is there. You see, Pondicherry you will find many temples. The temple culture is so rich and vibrant. And thanks to the Puducherry government, they have established this uh, department of Hindu religious institutions. And particularly this uh, Ganesh temple, which uh, Sri Shankar Babaji is going to deliver in a detailed speech on this. In this temple, you will find a beautiful statue of Ganesh, Lord Ganesh, depicting different countries. That's the Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, many countries, and how this Ganesh is depicted in that you can see on those walls. We can go to Delhi if you have not been there. Okay. This is about Rishi Agastya's statue. Rishi Agastya came to this land 
and had a unique legacy, many scriptures, and he is the father of Siddha meditation. You will find many traditions, the temples, legacy of the Rishi Agastya is there. And also in such a small land, you will also find the existence of this is the statue of Lord Buddha. Although Buddhism is not remain intact in a more specific way, but we have some. You can also find some remains, some sculptures in the Pondicherry Museum also. Also, we find here the presence of the Jaina traditions. They have the Tithankar, the statue, the temples are there. This is one of the unique features. This is the Bade Shahab Siddha Sai. He was basically a Muslim saint, we can say. But uh, consciousness has no religion, I believe. And in this Shiva temple, in this temple you will find here the Samadhi of Bade Shahab is there. And also Rishi, uh, the Shiva Linga is there. You will find the statue of Ganesh is there. And the Bade Shahab statue is there. He was a healer. He was to, able to recover many of the unseen diseases. And also not only the Siddhas, it's not like the masculine or feminine things, it's a matter of spirit and Shakti. What Swami Vivekananda refers in his Chicago speech, you will be astonished that we have a legacy of the Rishis, but some Rishikas were also there. Bodha, Apala, Maitri, Gargi is there. School Okay. So this is one of the Siddha sites you will find Guru Swami Umas, this is the temple and the government is trying to establish a new or new temple because the older ones. We have also beautiful churches. You can find how this city has evolved in many cultures and many dimensions in such a small land. And Aurobil, the city of the future, the mother established. So Shri the Ashram, Shri the Society and Aurobil. These are the three consciousness I can say, the creations of the mother. And in each part of each part of this city, when you visit, you will find different different caves are there. So that's why we choosing this today's topic at Pondicherry as the cave of the Pusha. And sir, as sir has mentioned about this spirituality, the main vibration of this land. When we you forget about this tangible heritage, how this city is involved with such a beautiful natural environment. As for the UNESCO convention, this culture only not only includes the tangible and intangible cultural heritage, but also the natural heritage. So it's a spiritual land, many of the Siddhas, even the great sages, uh, Rishis like Swami Vivekananda, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they visited this land. Even if nowadays also millions of people visit to this land to find a peace of will, a small peace of consciousness in our mind to explore ourselves. So this is a little bit of information I was trying to say here on this occasion. And uh, sir, for your information, when I came to, we, we came to this place, we were in a process to trying to know about this land, its people and the culture. What we do is we created some small, small projects. So projects, we had some extensive field visits to the temples, to the monuments, to the communities. And recently, as you mentioned about the Siddha conference, it took two years for our extensive field study. Charu, the associate director from Shirana Society, is looking after the project. And this project is part of our one of the projects that is documentation of monuments and heritage sites and promotion of and promotion of heritage tourism. So we are in a Actually, through this project, we are trying to document all these heritage sites related to different traditions. And also, we are trying to create a digital repository of all these resources, so it can be used for the researchers and the scholars for the for the academic things. So, this was a small information which I was trying to uh, say. Uh, before I proceed to request to Lalit Bhai, our esteemed speaker, Professor H. Lepurmulji, the former professor from Pondicherry University and he served many of the departments. Sir was mentioning about you. We will felicitate him and uh, listen to him. Mm-hmm. 
We will now listen to the eminent speakers, those who have joined with us, Sri Lalit Bhai, Dr. S. P. Goshramaji Ji, Sri Arpit Ji, Sri Shri Shankar Babu Ji, Professor H. Anubar Amal Ji. We will start with uh, Sri Lalit Bhai. I consider him as my elder brother. And Lalit Bhai doesn't require any introduction actually. His name is enough. What I have seen through his lifetime, he studied here in Sri International Center for Education and his deep passion to the culture. He has established this Aurodhana Art Gallery, is the president here. But he has organized more than thousands of events. Every day, every day some three, four events are there addressing some of the critical issues and some of the intangible things. So may I request Lalit Bhai to kindly share your ideas on this special occasion, please. Thank you, uh, Vishwar Bhai. Can you hear? Yeah. Thank you so much, Vishwar Bhai, for inviting me for uh, the 10th Heritage uh, Festival. And um, definitely we have a beautiful heritage to talk about. Uh, in the last few minutes we came to know that Pondicherry has seen <coughs> some of the great personalities, uh, great gathered great wisdom over the years and I remember a small incident when um, we were in Jaipur giving a presentation on Pondicherry's culture to the Ayuta tour operators of India, 1500 of them and um, every minister was giving their uh, presentation on their state and when the time came for Pondicherry I was sitting down there, I was sitting in the crowd and I was asked to come and speak something about Pondicherry's culture because our chief minister wanted it to be told in English. And after having heard all the different chief ministers of different states, what can you say? But something uh, that was said that day becomes very relevant on the topic, the cave of Tapasya. What was said was that Pondicherry does not have deserts like Rajasthan. It does not have forts like Rajasthan. It does not have mountains. It does not have bank. It does not have any forest. It does not have wildlife. And then I remember my friend Mr. Amitabh Kant. He mentioned that you know we are we have backwaters in Kerala. We are God's own country. And I remember having said that we don't even have backwaters. And neither are we God's own country. But when God needs a break, he comes to punish <laughs> So, many gods have come and given and taken a break here, but there is one God who has made it his cave of the Pasya. And he has not only <coughs> come here like many others to take a break, because this has now become a tourist spot. He has come here to break the yoke of so many centuries of inner slavery. We still are under the colonial yoke mentally. We are still under the yoke of our own attachments. And what Sri Aurobindo did, he chose this place as a cave. I remember as you just mentioned, Nalini had mentioned that it is the, when he came, it was like a cemetery of sadhana. So it was literally like a cemetery, it's a dead place. And Sri Aurobindo made it into his cave of Tapasya. And without the slightest doubt, I can say that now it has become, in some form or the other, a lighthouse of spirituality. Many of us have seen the transition taking place. My friends who would come from Europe would always think, you know, that their families would think that this, this child has gone mad and has come to this cave. And what will he do? I remember, in fact, even one of my family members telling to my other family member that why do you behave like a frog in the well coming to Pondicherry? You know, it's, like, it's a place where it's like you are just like a frog in the well. And I remember the beautiful answer I said, No, it is not like the frog in the well, but like the tortoise in his shell. <laughs> this place does not only have wisdom to share, but above all, it does not have only grace to give, again because of it becoming the cave of Sri Aurobindo, but it also has to offer you what we really need today in this world, that is known as protection. You can be 
in the right direction, you can be in the, in the train that is taking in the right place, right direction, right speed. Everything can be perfect, but it can get derailed and everything can get over if you do not have protection. So when this place was chosen by Sri Aurobindo, I'm very happy that uh, he brought out some of the greatest revolutionary thoughts that mankind has had like all life is yoga. Who can imagine somebody saying all life is yoga? Revolutionary thoughts like any line you think from Savitri is a revolutionary thought. For instance, I'm thinking of a line, our life on earth is a divine poem which we are translating into earthly language. Again, it's a secret that is just given out to all of us. Sri became not only a yogi, a kavi, but somebody who shared everything like you are getting oxygen completely without your any effort from your side. And then the mother chose this place and gave an extraordinary symbolism to the Matrima, the photo that is there. What she said, if you want to manifest anything, you need two forces. One from down up, the other from up down. And Matri Mandir, the down up movement is aspiration and from above is the grace from above. And Matri Mandir represents the aspiration of humanity towards perfection from below up. And that light that falls inside is like the grace that comes and when the aspiration meets the grace, there is transformation. The power of Sri Aurobindo's words to Tapasya in his cave is like, as a poet, just one example, I don't want to take more time, but as a poet, he writes a poem and it can transform you entirely. For me it did, many of you know that I weighed 25 kilos more, but there's just one sent two sentences from him that made me an effort, uh, which gave me a chance to change. In his poem called Transformation, the last two lines, he says that my body is God's living and happy too. And my spirit is a vast sun of deathless light. Now I'm telling you this because that sentence transformed my physical body from a big weight to a lower weight. Just the power of his beautiful, transformative, revolutionary thoughts. So I would like to end by telling you that my take from this topic, from the cave of Tapasya, of course it was the cemetery of Sadhana, it became then the cave of Tapasya. Definitely today it is the lighthouse of spirituality which benefits mankind and our only hope. But I truly believe, if you like, that the energies that are transforming Kaliyuk into Satyuk are generated from here because it being children who gave. But the evening thing you mentioned to the pay particularly uh, lighthouse of spirituality. Yeah, it is one of the unique things. And uh, it is always a matter of great pleasure to listen to you because you studied in such an environment which has given a different dimensions to explore the consciousness. And very beautifully you mentioned about uh, I'd like just one to uh, something I was uh, reading. Like you mentioned about Sri Aurobindo from this place, that given the greatest revolutionary ideas, even if in the uh, RA philosophical review, some of the comments are taken. It is from Pondicherry that now there comes to us this new review, rich in knowledge and ideas, addressing it itself to philosophies by its studies, speculative and synthetic, to historians and linguists by its translations and commentaries. On the sacred books of the Hindus, the Vedas, and the treatises of Indian philosophy, the Upanishads. Because we rightly mentioned from this land, Sri have given a special dimension, especially addressing the traditions, and including the scriptures. Thank you so much for your valuable ideas. And uh, may I request uh, our uh, eminent speaker from uh, Mathura. So, when we talk about Mathura and Vrindavan, Lord Krishna's place, 
when we visit Mathura, everywhere we listen one sentence that is Radhe Radhe. But the second sentence is very astonishing. No one says that. Uh, I asked someone, why these people say Radhe Radhe? Is this is a complete one or Sham Milade? Sham Milade. The next line was Sam Se Milade. Please unite me with the Sam one. Because everyone is searching Lord Sharma. So recently we came in contact with him and I said about this event and he agreed for this event. Uh, we have Dr. S.P. Goswamiji. He is uh, currently the advisor to the Chancellor of KM University Mathura and, being, and also a member of Shirodham the Society's branch. So it's a proud moment for us because we have the father and son so devoted to the same path. And I request Shri Dr. S. P. Goswamiji to kindly say his few words on this occasion. Thank you, my dear Kishore Tripathi ji. Om No Bhagavati Shri Alunda. Manch par upasthit. Can I speak in Hindi? Yeah, yeah, please. Manch par upasthit. सम्मानीय वीसी साहेब श्री ललित जी श्री शिवशंकर बाबू जी और मेरे प्रोफेसर रिटायर्ड प्रोफेसर साहब यस एंड डॉक्टर श्री अर्पित एंड ऑल द मेंबर्स कोई प्रेजेंट हेयर यहां सभी विद्वान हैं सभी लोग श्री अरविंद के बारे में जानते हैं और अभी मेरे पूर्व वक्ताओं ने पंडिचेरी द केव ऑफ द तपस्या के बारे में जो डिस्कस किया ऋषि साहब ने बताया यहाँ के इतिहास के बारे में पंडिचेरी को पहले वेदपुरी कहा जाता था एक्चुअली जहां पर तीर्थ स्थल होते हैं वहां पर व्यक्ति सकारात्मक ऊर्जा को ग्रहण करता है हम मंदिर क्यों जाते हैं मंदिर इसलिए जाते हैं कि वहां पर कोई निगेटिव ऊर्जा नहीं होती है बल्कि वहां से हम जब आते हैं लौट कर तो प्रसन्न चित्त होती है वो सकारात्मक ऊर्जा को हम ग्रहण करते हैं इसलिए हम मंदिर जाते हैं वैसे तो मंदिर मंदिरों की मंदिरों का राज कहिए भारतवर्ष को यहां पर विभिन्न धर्मों के विभिन्न मजहबों के तीर्थ स्थल हैं यहां पर सकारात्मक ऊर्जा मिलती है यहां पर हमको लेकिन पांडिचेरी के बारे में अगर कहा जाए तो जैसे अभी स्वामी विवेकानंद के बारे में कहा गया था ऋषि अगस्त के बारे में भी दिखाया गया था लेकिन पांडिचेरी तो महर्षि अरविंदो की वो तपोस्थल ही है जहां पर अगर इंसान आ जाए तो ये समझ लीजिए कि उसका कई जन्मों का उद्धार हो जाता है यहां पर आने मात्र से इस भूमि को टच करने से ही उसके अंदर आध्यात्मिक शक्ति का उदय हो जाता है और वो एक बहुत अच्छी यहां पर आकर एनर्जी लेकर जैविक ऊर्जा लेकर वाइटल एनर्जी लेकर यहां से जाता है यहां से चैत्य ऊर्जा को लेकर यहां से प्रस्थान करता है जब यहां आता है तो उसके अंदर आप देखते हैं मैंने देखा है यहां पर मैं उन्नीस सौ अट्ठानवे से यहां से आ रहा हूं लगातार मथुरा के अंदर जो श्री अमरनाथ विद्याश्रम सोसाइटी है वहां मिस्टर बनिल वाजपेयी जी और उनके पिता श्री श्री डॉक्टर आनंद मोहन वाजपेयी जी ललित मोहन वाजपेयी जी जिन्होंने बहुत अच्छा इस्टेब्लिश कर रखा है वहां के परम भक्त हैं वो डॉक्टर अनिल वाजपेयी तो मैं जब उस विद्यालय में जाता हूं तो पता नहीं क्यों एक शरीर के अंदर इतनी सकारात्मक सोच भाव के अंदर विचारों के अंदर मस्तिष्क के अंदर पैदा हो जाती है वही स्थिति 
या पांडिचेरी आने पर हम लोग एक दूसरे ही विचारधारा में खो जाते हैं और ये स्थली वेदपुरी कहें या ऋषियों की भूमि कहें मैं तो ये कहूंगा कि ये भूमि पांडिचेरी भूमि जो है ये तपस्व तपोस्थली श्री अरविंद की तो है ही ये वो महर्षि अरविंदों की तपस्थली है क्योंकि महर्षि अरविंद महर्षि भी कहा जाए तो वो भी श्री अरविंद के लिए कम होगा मैं तो ये कहूंगा कि वो महर्षि केवल महर्षि नहीं थे वो तो एक प्रभु का अवतार थे वो करुणा के अवतार थे उन्होंने जो किया मानव देह में आकर यहां पर उस प्रभु ने मानव देह के रूप में यहां आकर जो कार्य किए वो उनसे पहले जो आए जितने अवतार हुए शायद उन्होंने भी वो कार्य नहीं किया जो श्री अरविंद ने यहां अवतार लेकर प्रभु के रूप में अवतार लेकर जो कार्य किया जो अथमानस को उतारा यहां पर उनतीस फरवरी उन्नीस सौ छप्पन को वो कार आज तक किसी न तो हमारे या किसी और हिंदू धर्म या अन्य धर्म के किसी प्रवर्तक ने या किसी अवतार ने किया जो महर्षि अरविंदों ने किया और मैं महर्षि अरविंदों की तीर्थ स्थली को मैं तो इस मंच से एक आवाज देना चाहता हूं कि इस तीर्थ स्थली को भारत सरकार को भी मैं निवेदन करना चाहूंगा माननीय पीएम मोदी से भी रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि इसको राष्ट्रीय तीर्थ स्थल घोषित किया जाए महर्षि अरविंदों की तपोस्थली को राष्ट्रीय तीर्थ स्थल के रूप में हमारे हिंदुस्तान के नक्शे पर लाया जाए मैं चाहूंगा श्री अरविंद सोसाइटी से श्री किशोर त्रिपाठी जी से और यहाँ के चेयरमैन साहब जो प्रदीप नारायण जी से भी रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा यहाँ के वीसी साहब से भी यहाँ सम्मानित जितने पांडिचेरी के सम्मानित गणमान्य व्यक्ति हैं सभी से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि इसका एक आंदोलन चलाया जाए एक ये राष्ट्रीय महर्षि अरविंदों की राष्ट्रीय स्थल में पर्यटन पर्यटक के रूप में और राष्ट्रीय तीर्थ स्थल के रूप में इसको घोषित करने के लिए एक जन आंदोलन चलाया जाए जिससे हम उस प्रभु के लिए कुछ अपनी अपनी भावांजलि अपनी श्रद्धांजलि अपने मनोभाव कुछ हम अर्पित कर सकें ऐसा मेरा आप सभी से निवेदन है कि इसको राष्ट्रीय तीर्थ स्थल घोषित करने का प्रयास किया जाए दूसरा श्री अरविंद के बारे में आप सभी जानते हैं विद्वान जन हैं क्योंकि मैं शिक्षा से जुड़ा हुआ हूं इसलिए दो बातें और कहना चाहूंगा शिक्षा के बारे में श्री मां ने कहा था कि शिक्षा का प्रथम सिद्धांत है कि कुछ भी सिखाया नहीं जा सकता ये मां का वचन है कुछ भी सिखाया नहीं जा सकता और उसी उसी सिद्धांत पर श्री महर्षि अरविंदों के और अरविंद इंटरनेशनल स्कूल वगैरह जितने हैं वो उसी सिद्धांत को लेकर चल रहे हैं और आज उनमें इतनी शक्ति है उन स्कूलों के अंदर अन्य स्कूलों से जो इन डिफरेंट है जो अलग है अलग है वो स्कूल श्री अरविंद इंटरनेशनल सोसाइटी ये हमको गर्व है आज हिंदुस्तान को महर्षि अरविंद की शिक्षा सिद्धांतों पर गर्व है कि आज उसी स्कूल की पढ़ी हुई हमारे हिंदुस्तान की राष्ट्रपति मुर्मू राष्ट्रपति आज राष्ट्रपति के पद पर आती है उसी विद्यालय से पढ़े इस बात का हमको गर्व होना चाहिए तो वो तो प्रभु का अवतार है महर्षि कोई ऋषि नहीं महात्मा नहीं महानायक नहीं महापुरुष नहीं वो तो प्रभु है 
हम उनको प्रभु के रूप में लेना और ऐसे प्रभु जो अभी ललित जी ने कहा कि जो जिन्होंने एक छोरी इस संसार को दी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन की डिवाइन बॉडी की अति मानव की जो छोरी थी ये मैं पहले भी कह चुका हूं इससे पूर्व आने वाले जो हमारे अवतार हुए प्रभु के देव देव अवतार हुए जो भी हुए किसी ने ये छोरी नहीं तो वो प्रभु ही दे सकती है जो कुछ कर सकते हैं दूसरा कहने के लिए तो बहुत कुछ है लेकिन मैंने दो शब्दों में जितना मुझे समय दिया गया किशोर त्रिपाठी जी की ओर से एक निवेदन और करना चाहूंगा मेंबर सेक्रेटरी साहब से कि इस तरह की चर्चाएं मुझे भी मालूम विगत दिनों होती रही हैं या नहीं होती रही हैं लेकिन इन चर्चाओं से हम आगे बढ़ेंगे उनके पथ पर चलेंगे उनके दिए हुए आदर्शों पर हम चलेंगे मैं श्री अरविंद और श्री मां के आदर्शों पर हम आगे बढ़ेंगे इतना कहकर मैं अपने वक्तव्य को विराम देता हूं धन्यवाद जय श्री मां जय श्री अरविंद राधे राधे जिनके पास धन होता है उनको धनवान कहा जाता है जिनके पास ज्ञान होता है उनको ज्ञानवान कहा जाता है और जिनके पास शिक्षा होता है उनको शिक्षा भी कहते हैं लगभग आपने अपनी थोड़ी सी समय में जिन बातों को रखा एक पर्टिकुलरली एक डिप्लोमेटिक सेटअप में एक शिक्षा विद और जो आपकी साधना है जिस तरीके से आपने इस पवित्र भूमि को आपने कहा कि यहाँ पे आने से ही मनुष्य को मोक्ष मुक्ति के कई जन्मों के वो सारे प्रोसेस कंप्लीट हो जाते हैं ये शास्त्र भी वही कहता है कि ये जो हमारा पुण्य भूमि भारतवर्ष है भारत का नाम सर्वप्रथम ऋग्वेद में आता है उदक ने भारत थी ऋग्वेद में आता है और इसी प्रक्रिया को आगे चल के पद्म पुराण में ऋषि कहते हैं कि मनुष्य का तो छोड़िए वहां पे ऋषि कह रहे हैं कि गायन थी देवा की लगी तकानी धन्यास्तुते भारत भूमि मागे स्वर्गर्भ वर्ग स्पद है तो भूमो भगवंती भूय पुरुषाश्वत्वा इसका अर्थ है गायंती देवा की लगी तक आए मतलब देवता लोग भी स्वर्ग में ये गीत गाते हैं धन्यास्त थे भारत भूमि वाले जो लोग भारत में जन्म हुए वो लोग धन्य है इसलिए क्योंकि ये वो भूमि है जहाँ पे स्वर्ग तो छोड़िए स्वर्ग करने के लिए स्वर्ग का वो यदि आपको यजत करनी पड़ेगी बोलते हैं कि भगवंती भूय यहाँ पे स्वर्ग और अकबर दोनों तत्वों को आप आविष्कार कर सकते हैं उसको कर सकते हैं इसीलिए मनुष्य तो छोड़िए देवता लोग बार बार यहाँ पे जन्म लेने के लिए वो लोग लोग गायंती देवा के लगी तक धन्यास्तुते भारत भूमि के जो आपने बातें बताए और मैं आपकी जानकारी के लिए बताऊ मैं भारत सरकार के संस्कृति मंत्रालय के साथ अंदर में जो बंदा सा so I was part of the institutions under the Ministry of Culture for 15 years, and through our projects also we are not doing only research projects and programs like the Siddha conference recently which we had. We proposed three things to the government. We are also working on that. The first, to recognize all the Siddha heritage sites under the UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. Second thing, some of the specific manuscripts under the intangible cultural heritage, no, some of the specific manuscripts under the UNESCO's Memory of the World Register and the Siddha practices under the UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage. So we are working on three major projects, sir. we are trying we are in the process to submit the proposal to the government and also we had in our mind that uh, this uh, cave of Tapasya, what we say in our board, Sri legacy, even if this tangible and intangible cultural heritage and to nominate you know, so, ashram and other things to be part of the UNESCO's world heritage. And we will be astonished and we are in a process that Pondicherry government and the department, Ministry of Tourism also, 
they are trying to nominate Pondicherry as a world heritage city. We have only two cities, Jaipur and Ahmedabad. And Pondicherry is going to be the third city in India, which will be the world heritage city tag. So, this is a very good thing you have told us. We will do this and it is the beginning of the program. We will do this and 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 we will do this. भगवान कृष्ण की जी के इसके लिए भी ट्राई करिए नाटक टीम से तरह तरह के लिए उसके लिए भी जरूर हम आपकी बात को नोट कर रहे हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करते हैं एंड नाउ वी वांट टू लिसन फ्रॉम प्रोफेसर ए चला प्रेमल जी इज एन एमिनेंट स्कॉलर सर्व द प्रेस्टिजियस पॉन्टचेरी यूनिवर्सिटी इन मेनी South Asian Studies Department and many times we said we discuss about a lot of things about the Pondicherry's this heritage and we welcome you sir for your presence and kindly he is going to talk something about the folk traditions, the folk religious cultural heritage. I request Professor Chela Guramurji to kindly yes. Good afternoon to you all. First of all I feel sorry for coming a little late. Uh, uh, respected uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Tanikarasu, uh, my dear friend uh, Sri Tripathi ji, uh, dear Sri Lalit Varma ji, dear Professor Go Sri Goswami ji, dear Basu ji, and other learned uh, persons who have assembled here. I am extremely happy here to be here to share some of my views. See, I have heard very good uh, talk provoking those short observations, short talks. So many good things have been shared here. As uh, Sri Tripathi ji said that relating to the general theme of Cave of Tapasya, I wanted to speak on the folk heritage, folk spirituality and folk tradition and other things related to the topic. After coming here, the same thing I am uh, reorienting myself to say a little more because I got some of the new insights by hearing the very good uh, the speeches by Lalitji and uh, Tripathi. And uh, just now he said, Lalitji said that Pondicherry is not having big fort, not having big mountain, not having desert, but I want to say, you know, Pondicherry is such a tiny place, what does it have? It has a big sea, okay. It has two rivers, Sankarabarni river, Tarnbani river. Though it was not uh, east to east, um, it is uh, two big rivers of uh, northern Tamil Nadu, reaches here and uh, to the Indi Sea. So one big sea, two rivers and 83 lakes. See this is such a tiny place. Uh, uh, that too, normally you have lakes in the dry regions. Ramanathapuram district has more lakes. Lakes means bigger tanks. Where the lands are dry, you have lakes. It is established by the traditional rulers and people maintain it and water storage and for agricultural purpose. It is for dry land agriculture. But uh, Pondicherry is not considered to be the water storming area. In spite of that, it has about 83 lakhs. Some of the lakhs are in bad shape. I do not want to go into it. Let me come to the other things. One of the most important thing, even biggest uh, regions, what they don't have, Pondicherry has. That is none other than mangroves. Do you have mangroves in all districts? In even whole India, you have only handful of the places only. If whole big Tamil Nadu state has only in Pichawa, okay. But we tiny place there. So we tiny Pondicherry as a sea, two rivers, 93 lakes, one mangrove forest. Eh? These are all the natural marvels. You cannot create these things. You can create building. Even you can create fort, you can create other things. These are all natural offerings to this spiritual land. That is the reason why it has attracted the Siddhas, it has attracted 
Sri Aurobindo has attracted um, Bharatiya. So many people, even now, even now, it attracts the spiritually those who want to seek, those who are spiritual seekers, come here and they get fulfilled here. So again, I want to tell you the relationship between the water spirituality and this place. Not only lakes, seas, mangroves, and the rivers and the people's belief system associated with this place. See, I tell you, I come, um, it is not only spirituality, as I told you, folk mentality, folk beliefs related to water matter, matters more here. See, tsunami affected whole South Asian coast. You know what happened just 100 kilometers away from Pondicherry in Chennai, tsunami affected. Just few hundred kilometers from here, Nagapatanam affected, but Pondicherry was left out by the by tsunami. Pondicherry was not affected. I mean, fatal. There were no fatalities. Okay, what reached here also? It has come up to the beach road. No doubt about it. There, but it was not having the fatalities as the other regions of the same coast. Same the coast starting from. Madras to Kanyakumari, how much of fatalities, how much of devastation, but how is that Pondicherry is left out? People scientifically you can tell so many things, oh, our sea here much deeper than compared to the other uh, seas right, right, in, right direct to the road. But the people's belief system says something else, because it is land of Siddhas, because it is land of Arabindo, because it is land of Mother, they are, they are safeguarding this land from not having any disasters. So it is folk beliefs. Then there is a reason for that. There are so many things related to water hierophany, water spirituality to Pondicherry. See, this is the month, Tamil month Masi. Now recently must have, uh, yeah, if you are in Pondicherry, you would have seen Masi Maham. In this Masi Maham, what happened? Hundreds and hundreds of deities, uh, gods of various places around Pondicherry, they all come here to have this spiritual, what you call it as Abhishek, Tirthavari, Tirtha, Tirtham, you know, <coughs> it is what <coughs> it is Abhishek. See, the, whether it is uh, Singapurmal coil or whether it is uh, Singavaram Ranganada Swami or it is uh, Devanur. Uh, Muruga, whatever it is, you know, more than 300 or 400 temple deities, they are Molavas, because you know, uh, Urchavas, I mean Urchavas, because Molavas can't be brought here. The Urchavas are brought here, under every day they come, they, um, they stay in Pondicherry and they go back. When they stay, they go around all the streets of the Pondicherry. Pondicherry people have the fortune of seeing the all hundreds and hundreds of the gods of this region even if you are in a, um, one place if you are in Thirunamala you can see if you are not if you can see if you are in Melbourne you can only see Angara Parmeshwari only you cannot say see the remaining hundreds of gods but if you are in Pondicherry if you are if you live in Pondicherry every day this for two weeks you are whole night one god after another one goddess after another they come in procession, you see, which means gods are coming to Pondicherry to bless the people of common people of Pondicherry. You need not have to undertake uh, pilgrimage, you need not have to uh, take the trouble of going to the hundreds of temples, the three, four districts around you. That is the reason why you hear um, something in a lighter way, something else also I want to add here. You see, sometimes people say, why is that Pondicherry people are not having the, what to say, the, the uh, they don't uh, go out of Pondicherry for employment or studies. Somehow or other, they are contented uh, to be in Pondicherry. It is not, see, very, very, the very people in Vilpuram district or take some of the people, the mentality of the southern Tamil Nadu people. They, um, they go to different places for higher studies. They go to job even to foreign everything. But people, Pondicherry people have some mentality. You don't take this as a stereotype. 
but somehow or other they don't go out of Pondicherry either for study, either for job, either for whatever, no, they are happy to be, to be here, we got whatever they have. Whenever you ask some of the people, I always have this um, thing, why is that Pondicherry people do not move out for anything? Or uh, to earn more or to learn more, they feel they have everything here. They said, Why to go outside? For that, uh, some of the people is telling me, See, the whole world is coming to Pondicherry. Why do you want me to go out of Pondicherry? <laughs> it is very, very interesting. See, that why I want to relate this thing. Hundreds of gods of all the temples of uh, uh, Vidupuram district, uh, Thiruvallur district, Kanjipuram districts. Um, uh, right, right from Trivandamalai, from Kadalur, from Vrittachalam, from Melmalayanur, from uh, Vidupuram, all coming to Pondicherry. Why should I take the trouble of going to those places to see the gods? Maybe probably this kind of mentality. Then I, uh, then I, I also want to touch upon other things. As there, is, as we didn't have severe tsunami. We, even now we don't have, Pancha do not have the severe floods, I want to say. You have severe cyclones. You used to have cyclone, we have Ghana cyclone, other cyclones. Somehow or other, you know, the point is, water is uh, spiritual, water is the spirituality with Pancha, what would do harm to Pancharians? That's what I am to say. Maybe wind may do some harm. Because <laughs> Cyclone, Tane, it is wind, it is not water. Whereas uh, the floods, even now, what happened in the Madras floods, what happened in southern Madras floods, but how is the Pondicherry is uh, safely managing? Uh, it, it is not only because of the natural gift, it added with this natural gift the hierophany, the spirituality, all these things. Again, I tell you, because I told you, you know, I will be talking on the folk duties, you have about the heart. More than 300 Mariamman temple. Not all Mariamman are one and the same. Different, different Mariamman. Put Mariamman, Muthu Mariamman, this Mariamman. And if you carefully look into the myths, read the myths, you will understand so many things. Mari means rain. In Tamil, Mari means what rain. So again, there is a relationship between water and thing. I do not want to go into detail all these things. Then you have one more thing I want to tell you. There is a temple called Vellantangi Ayanar temple, if you have the, uh, it is very near to the Pondicherry bus stand. Vellantangi Ayanar means, it is literal meaning is flood protecting Ayanar. Ayanar is a temple for deity. His duty is not to have any flood damage to this place. So, if you see this interesting thing, if people have the Vellantangi Ayanar temple, you have Ayanar temples everywhere, even in Pondicherry, you have so many other Ayanars. But you don't have Vellantangi Ayanar anywhere in Tamil Nadu. You have only in Pondicherry. What does it mean? Which means, what I want to say, you know, here, not only the high level spirituality, not only the high level hierophany, not only the high level transcendence, you also have the common man's philosophy, common man's spirituality is also attached with this land. And um, see, so another, another, there are other minor points I do not want to go into detail because we have to hear other people also. And um, then there is also one more, with one more point I will end. Here um, when Tripathi ji showed some of the slides, he was mentioned, uh, showing Agastya ideals, ideals in some of the temples, I think in Mangal, some temples. You would be surprised to know there is a temple, specific temple for Agastya in Pondicherry. It is very near to this uh, uh, Nilitopu Subaya uh, stretch here. Very small temple, Agastya temple. Once again, I want to tell you, you don't uh, find Agastya temple, you don't have more Agastya temple in Tamil Nadu. You can only four or five Agastya temples only in whole of Tamil Nadu. I myself have seen one in South Tamil Nadu, Pavanasam, and one, one here, and maybe even if you take a census, you won't have more than five Agastya temples. Maybe you may be having Agastya idols in some of the temples. But why the I want to tell you the significance of Agastya, who is Agastya for Tamil land? Agastya is considered to be the culture hero of the Tamil land. 
See, each culture has their its own okay, their own culture guru who brings water, who brings food, who brings uh, fire, who brings everything to the people. So it is Agastya, Lord Agastya, who brought language, who brought water, who brought rain, everything to Tamil Nadu. So that Agastya temple, all the Agastya, in this tiny place you have uh, in Pondicherry. That is the thing, you know, it is actually, people always say it is uh, uh, Pondicherry's mini school, but it is you, in the mini school, you have whole macrocosm. If you want to have the experience of macrocosm, you have to have the experience of mini school Pondicherry. I stop here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for presenting the beautiful ideas related to the folk tradition and culture. In his uh, deep research, particularly the anthropological studies, he has a wider experience. And when we talk about, he mentioned about the spiritual things, the temples, like the 93 lakes. Mm -hmm. And also in some of the temples, we saw some of the sacred, uh, this uh, oh. sacred groups and also the tithas, tithas, thanas and sutras. What is in her temple tanks? The sacred temple tanks are also there in more than 45 or 50 temples. And also what Lalit Rai mentioned about when the god needs a break, they come to Puchari. And this Masimagam festival is one of the biggest festivals. Even if all the gods and goddesses, they just came out from their caves. We say it's a temple, but it's a cave actually. And you'll we'll see all the gods and goddesses in the morning, particularly in the early morning time, you'll we'll see how beautifully as rightly you have mentioned about the spiritual path, the Abhishekams. So it is a wonderful uh, thing what you mentioned about and uh, we are also documenting the temples. So uh, perhaps just when we enter to this area, we just thought let us spend some 3, 4, 5 years of time. Whatever things are there, let us properly document. Many things have already been done. So when we talk about the temples, now we have our Shiv Shankar uh, Babuji is an uh, expert speaker and his research especially on the temples. He had a beautiful presentation during the National Tourism Conference we had in the last year. And uh, I request uh, Shiv Shankar Bhaiya to kindly speak on this uh, occasion on something on the temples. Good evening all. My pronouns to Sri Aravindu and Mother. I was here on a holiday for two, three days, but it is Aravindu's and Mother's field that I should participate in. And Vishwaji uh, called me and then uh, can you talk for the minutes? So I started my stream and I am blessed to be here. And thanks for your heart of this society and all the dignitaries here who are experts in various areas and happy to be part of this August crowd and talk what I know little about temples of Pondi. I have experts sitting here in front of me like that who have been running around this area for ages from his life. But uh, he might be adding both. But I am giving my perspective of temples. Harbindra says that Pandi is my care of the sin. Okay, that is his brand of spiritualization. When we talk about this spiritualization, I am trying to highlight the inspiration. The care has been there. Care has been there since 56th century. And it is one of the oldest places in terms of trade, in terms of spirituality. That care. Now, because of the Tapasya, because of the new renovation, has been changed into a slightly different culture which is, if you see, somewhat different from the other temples in Tamil Nadu. You can see here clearly 
what is the difference? In what way they are unique from different from other parts? There is a fusion, there is a different vibrant energy. See, when we talk about temples, we talk about we talk about temple as a body, a spiritual body where all parts are aligned to the various components of temples from Gopura to all the way to the Mugastha. Similarly, we can also visualize a temple as the embodiment of the six major yoga chakras of our body, starting from Morasthana to Arjuna Chakra, which is Matthew Linga. So, this is how our forefathers visualized temples. We can verify this by looking at the superimposed picture of Tanjavur picture. So, you can see that. This is your Mubadara to Arma Chakra. This is matching. So, this is how we visualize temples, and this is how we build temples. Now, if you see why we go to temple nowadays, now we have come to the modern age. Why do we go to temples? Mostly, to see God, to pray God, the question here is, some people go there, they got a lot of trouble at home, so temple is a peaceful place. No mom here, no mother in love, nothing, relax. Just enjoy the ideas. Cultural events are there, and then economic services. What do you think by economic services? If you like five lamps, you will pass this year. If you like seven lamps, <laughs> you, you get well. Like that, there are a lot of economic offers nowadays in, in this one. So, this is how it's happening. And social meetings. All the mother in class around 4 o'clock, they gather together <coughs> and then they talk about this. Class. So, this is a lot of activities are happening. And of course, gastronomical experiences. People come there in the morning. People who don't wake up in the morning suddenly wake up in Margali time because Margali Pungal, Kainiriya Pungal, so they, they come. So, gastric, so then if you see this, people come there for various kinds of reasons other than spirituality. This is where the current situation is. If you look at this, other than the things we now will see, there are a lot of new things to see. The Vimanas, the Sanctums, the ideals, beautiful ideals in bronze and the fantastic. Fantastic cultures which portray your natural <coughs> everyday life. Inscriptions which talk about your history. A lot of paintings which shows how people are living at that point of time, Purana stories, and then of course various types of ourselves, Koga, Yinkli, Vada. So jumping and then they go, we see a lot of other things to see other than the things. So temples are different. We can see so many things. And the body is blessed with many of the beautiful temples. And I have listed around 9 or 10 of the temples, which you can cover in 2 and a half hours transit time. This, this, this is how it starts. Karnishwari temple, even by, and then Pachamuga Anjaneya temple, and then Karadaraja, and Kundamuri uh, Mahajadar, and then. 
is coming it is very next to aravil because of the aravil program this area is coming into a green land so this is the farmers which karavil is the restaurant so this is the murals i was talking about there are all murals uh, in the temple you know, explaining how karavil is the uh, made this uh, area for them and how Uh, they were supporting at their first year and how people took it wrong here and come and start it. But the entire history is there with the temple. One of totally different temples which are not seen in many downward areas. Now, we are going to the 9th century. Muranada Swami Temple in Babu. One of the greatest temples which is there from Nandiraman period. And it is one of the classical temples renovated by Rashtra Kuda kings on the way from Bombay, Maharashtra. King Krishna was occupying this during a ritual of India and he renovated this temple. And there was a great Sanskrit college running here, which you mentioned. There was a great Sanskrit college running here. Later period, it is one of the temples which was renovated by French. And uh, And it was then in a slightly different stage. So if you see this, the original temple is in the uh, normal Dravida style, and the later renovations are in typical French. This is the fish. This you can see it anywhere else. Then we are seeing around 10th century, Balaraja temple, Tirupati, Parathala period. Originally, it was called the Tirubhuvana Mahadevi uh, area, and then it had get shifted into Tirubhuvana. So here, the beauty is there are a lot of miniatures in this area, and in the temple about Ramayana, Mahabharata, Vishnu Purana, very beautiful miniatures. And in front of the temple, there was a function in Veda Pagasala, and there were inscriptions about how many people were there, how much food was there, how much grant uh, um, was here, and it was in. It was a very functioning Veda Pagasala. 
This is the kind of miniatures which you are talking about. Elephants, lions and all the local stances. So this is something which you should take it with your family. Next one is a Panchanabhi Surah Tapu, which is also a Shoda period, Paragara period. And that, this is known for beautiful portion. This niche contains beautiful Shiva and uh, Ganesha and other idols. And the, the latest tradition, Murugan Temple, is also having beautiful pictures. And it is not one of the, the complete tall uh, Vimanas of Shoda period. Here it is unique having Saptamatrika is very very rich here. No? Saptamatrika apparently is very popular, but here this is a full set in comfortable structure applications. Next, we are coming to 10th century, Kondamini Mahadeva temple on the way to the world. This is a beautiful temple of Rajaraja one period. It might have been existed previously, but the first inscription we get here is of Rajaraja period. The uniqueness of Rajaraja temples is like this curved circular dome here also, which is carved in granite in sections and then fit up perfectly, which is very difficult and, and the single color. This is a hallmark of Rajaraja one period temples before big temple. So this is all trials which he has done. And here also the Deva Prasha and the sculptures are very very beautiful. Bodhakana and the Shiva Purana miniatures are there in the series. Now, they are coming to Virilu, the recently um, modified temple. Very beautiful and uh, fantastic temple. Very serene, clean, and this is how it looks like with the, the GoPro and the, the lot of subsidiary temples are there. This temple is known for uh, the Temple Car Festival, which is very famous and uh, very, very interesting temple. Now, we are coming to the popular temple, Manakrabana temple. So this is not a temple, this is a veritable museum about Ganesha. Like when you take Pondicherry, the first thing it comes to my mind is clean and the temple is also clean. All the temples which we have seen so far have the common characters of being very 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 clean, typical, nice and this is the best one with so much of volume they maintain the, the cleanliness and this one. And this temple itself is full of so much of information. I usually advise people to buy a, a box of iodex or avatar before we go into the temple. Not because of headache, because there is so much of sculptures on the roof. So by the time you come back, your neck will be paying like it. Fantastic, fantastic variations of Ganapati from 5th, 6th century, all the way up to 18th century, all over the world, Java, Sumatra, Borneo, Sri Lanka, Iran, all these places, the exact replicas with the details are available there. You can spend a lot. This is what I was talking about. The Kanabati sculptures on the top, and interestingly, recently what they have done is another innovation. The 12 Rossis, which we have, and also the 27 stars. We usually have a notational visualization only. Here, they have converted into Greek to human form with their own Vagana and other things, and very, very beautiful graphical representation, which is not available in any of the other Kamrad temple. The only other temple having constellations in the rooftop is the um, Audia Goi near Madhuri. There too, they give only the abstract stars, not in human vision forms. So, 
This is something he did. It was built on top of an old pond. And it is another interesting thing is this is the only Pandaya temple where you have Pandiyari path here. It's a very good thing. So the, the, the path around is taken to the Pandiyari. So this is the icon of Pandicherry. Whenever you go and come back to your blocks, did you visit Anupravana either? Have you got the prasad? So that is the amount of it is neutral for any uh, religion. Whoever is buying new cars, vehicles, the first puja is done. And another hidden gem is the Taniga Parameshwari Temple. This is a fusion of Dravida and French states. And it has got Dravida Vimana and also the French has a huge power columns on the bus and the archery walls and the angels and then stained glass panels. And it is it will be feel like a totally different temple. It is small but colorfully decorated. And it is managed by Shittiyas in a different way, they have been fighting and celebrating. Very colorful temple. See this. Fantastic vibrance and the, so many rituals and festivals. That is the core of Pandi spirit. Now, coming to the modern temples. Dr. Karan Singh, who is one of the patterns, and then who visualized a lot of things. He has done a lot of things for Indian uh, Constitution and Education Minister. And uh, he visualized a different temple, not the prediction. So this is called the Arneshwara Temple. And this was built in 2000. And uh, again it was attacked by tsunami and reconstructed in 2006. So the center contains the Nagraja way. The third eye of Nagraja is in the center, the exact center. There is a small place where you can sit down and pray, and there will be a woe chanting on this. You go and sit there for 10 minutes, you will get fantastic vibrance. If the total temple will be calm, silent, only woe will be chanted. And you get fantastic vibrance. That is the beauty of the temple. And uh, it is built with uh, economic energy tiles which doesn't get built. It was nice modern construction. Next to it, another modern temple which people usually say this is Anchavati Temple, Anjaneya. So now the tallest 36 feet Anjaneya with five faces. And Anama, Garuda, Aidu, Narasimha, Uttara. So, this is again a modern temple, and like all party temples, very clean, neat, well maintained, and with fantastic parking and other facilities. And there is a 14 kg female stone, it's like that, which was used in the in the Ramasiddhu kind of a thing. So, this is a Give a stone which can float in water and it is supposed that they were using it for building the house. Another interesting point is it is tourist friendly and it is open from morning 5 till night on Saturdays and Sundays. So no crossing doors. So anytime you can visit. Now coming to the final, the latest one which Sarah was telling, Savitri Jnana Ulipoi. Based on Aravindo's epic, now this epic was a book, was a library, now it has been met. So this is around 40-50 uh, kilometers from here, near Kulapuram. Recently last year started and this year they have done the consideration in Puja. Two days ago there was also some Pujas happening there. So this is the main Savatri temple. The interesting point of this is that unlike South Indian temples where we cannot go beyond a certain level, even Pujari cannot go beyond a temple. 
certain level. Only certain people can do the puja and then the abhishekha puja. Here you can do touch, pray, and uh, do all sorts of abhishekha to the idols. This is not only really restricted to Savitri. Here we can go inside. You can sit near Savitri in the temple, and then you can pray. In, in addition, around this, there are five subsidiary temples. Beauties, all of them are in open, not in close, they are artistic, they are open. Beautiful Ganavati temple facing east, and then Yamadar Naraja facing south, and then uh, Gayatri Devi facing east, and then uh, <laughs> The Bhairava facing south and Kalinga Nartana facing southeast. So these three temples, five temples, are subsidiary temples where you can actually go and then you can do Abhishekam and then brain process. So this is how Pandi as Yes, a yeah, spiritual center, a <laughs> cave of Tapasya uh, has evolved and aligned into a totally different culture of fusion of concepts and then colonies and then French inflation and it has got its own different culture. So, thank you for your brief intro into temples and uh, if I had any understanding mistakes or something, it is on the short term of preparation. Maybe sir and others can give far more detailed information about Pondicherry temples. Thank you all. If you want to see further more uh, videos about temples, temple architecture, you can follow my uh, YouTube channel, Babu for Education. There, there are a lot of other uh, earlier talks I have given on Aravida Society as well as in Pondicherry University Aravida. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sikh Sankarbhai, for your beautiful presentation, especially in the temple traditions, which is really rich. And uh, in your presentation, you beautifully mentioned that we only visit to the temple to communicate with the gods to get some specific things. But apart from our connection with the gods, there are also many things needs to be explored in terms of iconography, in terms of the scriptures, in terms of folk arts, the traditions, many things have to be mentioned. One thing is coming uh, in my mind, I would like to say here, <coughs> when you visit any of the temples in South India, in certain temples, the dhoti is needed. And uh, <laughs> when I contacted Sri Shankar Bhai, he just came for two days. And he purchased new dhoti and I go visited many temples and I did all his research. <laughs> and we are really very happy to for your presence and we'll continue this initiative with some other activities. Thank you so much for your presentation. So now the I should not say it's the last actually, it's not the Ant, but it's the Anant actually. Before I invite Sri RPJ, I would like to say something. In the Brihadaranya Upanishad, there is a saying, very beautiful saying actually. That is the transmission of the knowledge, like uh, the, the relationship between the father and son. repeat कि मैं ब्रह्म हूँ, मैं लोक हूँ और मैं यज्ञ हूँ। ऐसा ऋषियों ने कहा है कि संसार में जो पिता है, वो पुत्र के कर्म में जीवित रहता है। अब ऐसा संयोग देखिए कि श्री अर्पित जी जिन्होंने अपने जीवन पूरी तरीके से मर्शल विंदर माता जी के अध्ययन में लगाया, उन्होंने बीएचडी भी की, उन्होंने डिलीट भी की। बट ये जो डिग्रियां उनके पास हैं उससे बढ़कर दो डिग्रियां उनके दोनों पार्श्व में उनके परम पुरुष पिताजी उपस्थित हैं उनके आदरणीय माताजी भी हैं 
इन लोगों से मैंने बात किया है रिसेंटली ब्रजभूमि मथुरा से हैं और इतने धार्मिक पुराण इतने रिलीजियस फैमिली से हैं इनकी बातों में इनके व्यवहार में मैं आदरणीय एस पी गोस्वामी जी के साथ गया था उनके घर जब मैं माता जी से मिला मैं एक्सप्रेस नहीं कर सकता अपने फीलिंग्स को उनके घर में जो भी था अमृत से लेके खजूर से लेके बट आई खाओ बेटा वो खाओ करके विद इन फाइव मिनट्स ऑफ टाइम सो दैट इज द बॉन्ड इज वे हैव सीन सच अ ब्यूटीफुल ट्रेडिशनल रिलीजियस ट्रेडिशनल फैमिली एंड श्री अर्पित जी हैज ए डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डिश स्पेशली neither he has studied nor he has done some research but he is living his practical life isliye jab maine unka rakha unhone maine kaha maine aapka ant mein hi rakha ant se hum log anand ki taraf jaye jayenge aur ye baat wahan pe jo bada vriksh hai aur bilkul usi ke niche pe ho raha tha ab 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 hum shri arpit ji se sunna hai bab aur shri arpit ji aapka swagat hai divyan chandra धन्यवाद सबसे पहले तो मैं श्री मा श्री अरविंद के चरणों में अपनी साधना समर्पित करता हूं और यहां सब हम सब माता के शिशु हैं हम सब मां की संतान हैं इस बात को हम सबसे पहले फील करें अंदर लें और उस जीवन को